This is Haste Computer Repair, and today we're taking a look at the Lano V12 laptop cooler. This laptop cooler is more geared towards gaming laptops, but I don't have any at the moment. The nearest equivalent I have is this Lenovo ThinkPad P51 workstation. I still think it's pretty relevant because it has a 4-core 8-thread Xeon CPU with a NVIDIA Quadro M2200 4GB GDDR5 graphics card. So that means I can do some gaming on it and do some workstation tasks and see what the temperatures are like and see how much this thing actually cools the laptop. So let's take a look. So here it is in all its cooling glory. I honestly do kind of like the look of this thing and I'm not really a big like RGB guy, but it's kind of fun to have some extra colors and some customization. Beside the power button, there's these two buttons here that allow you to change between four different modes and over 10 different color schemes. So right now we have the RPM set to 300, so we're not overwhelming the audio, but you can go all the way up to 2800 RPM. Yeah, you can definitely hear and feel that. And it has this memory foam for your laptop to sit on. And underneath this top piece here, you can see there's actually ample clearance for lots of airflow, which should work pretty well for where the CPU and GPU air intakes are on the P51. If you flip this thing upside down, it looks like you can gain access to the fan just by lifting up the two little latches here. Looks like there's a filter here that you can easily take out for cleaning. And there we go, that's what the air intake looks like. And it looks like the fan is about 5.5 inches, which is 140 millimeters for direct comparison to a PC case fan. It's probably a good time to point out that there's feet that you can bring up and down to get better airflow. And you can get some extra height by bringing this little piece out like that. So if the laptop doesn't slide out, we have these two little latches on either end. And here's how it looks with the laptop on it. And it looks like a pretty snug fit which I suppose is good because if we're going to be balancing how well this thing cools the CPU and GPU fans, it's kind of easier to have a proper test if we're only measuring the air from the fan and not passive air if there happened to be like a big gap here, which there doesn't seem to be. What's pretty exciting for a guy like me is the USB expansion. So we have a hub here with three USB ports and that's connected via a USB type C cable to the back of the ThinkPad over here. So if I wanted to connect something like a mouse, there we go, we got a mouse. Now the P51 already has a lot of USB ports to choose from, but a different gaming laptop probably doesn't have near as much, so having a hub probably helps out. I guess I should note, just in case you were expecting it, there's no batteries in this thing, so you will need to be connected to a power source. It will be kind of cool to have the mobility of a battery pack and I guess you could use one. But usually for gaming laptops, the user wants to be by a power source. So we had a pretty good look at this laptop cooler. Now it's time for the tests. So I've got the P51 laptop all set up and ready to go. Just a quick overview on specs. We have an Intel Xeon CPU E3-1535M V6 with four cores and eight threads. 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 MHz ECC RAM. There's a 256 gigabyte TimeTech NVMe solid state drive at PCI 3x4 speeds. And the dedicated graphics card we're working with is a NVIDIA Quadro M2200 with four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. We'll also be running things at native 1080p resolution, and for online games, we'll be connected via Ethernet cable, not just using the Wi-Fi. The way we'll be measuring temperatures is with CPU ID hardware monitor and MSI afterburner, and we'll be recording data into a bar chart. Just to keep things simple, we'll be measuring the temperatures after 15 minutes of a benchmark or gameplay, and also recording the hotspot. And we'll be keeping the fan speeds at a reasonable 1000 RPM because that will provide a good amount of airflow without making it too loud and still keeping the fan noise level in the white noise range. Especially while using headphones. I know 2800 RPM would cool it really well, but that's really loud. I don't really expect to run this thing at full blast the whole time I'm gaming or doing whatever task. We have hardware monitor open and firmware ready to go. Right now for the CPU, we're idling around 41 degrees Celsius, and for the GPU, around 34 degrees Celsius. And the 15 minute test begins. 
So I just want to note that between testing, I gave a cool down period just so the temperature results aren't inflated either end of the spectrum. And we'll see you in 15 minutes. So we can see that the difference in Fermark temps is actually pretty remarkable. For the CPU, after 15 minutes, we have a difference of 16 degrees Celsius and the GPU is 17 degrees Celsius. And respectively, with the hotspot, the CPU had a difference of 19 degrees and the GPU 17 degrees. Just to demonstrate the live performance of the cooler, I've had Fermark running for a few minutes now. On the Fermark charts, we have the Quadro GPU at around 59 degrees Celsius with a hotspot of 68. Let's get the cooler powered on and turn it all the way up to 2800 RPM. Alright, so you can probably hear that ramping up. Let's see how the temperature goes down after just a couple of seconds. So just after, just above 90 seconds, we have the GPU down to 43, 42 degrees Celsius and the hotspot at around 51 degrees Celsius. So I don't totally expect somebody to run this fan at 2800 RPM all the time, but of course you could. And it is right now. The main thing that we wanted to demonstrate is just how quickly the temperatures drop and I'm actually pretty impressed. Now it's time for some gaming tests without the cooler and with the cooler. I'll be using the same method of 15 minutes with and without the cooler and also with a little cool down period in between. And this part will be a bit of a montage, so cue that. On top of the gaming temperatures, I also wanted to test out some video rendering and video encoding. Because the P51 is like a workstation laptop, I'd like to test out the temperatures with DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake. So would I recommend this laptop cooler to you? If you have the money to spend, why not? It obviously works really well, and if you've already spent the money for an expensive gaming laptop, why not have fun trying something like this out? However, if you're on a tight budget, maybe save up or really think about if it's something that you can actually use. Theoretically, the extra cooling could add to the longevity of your computer hardware. I would actually be pretty curious to know if it had long-term positive effects. As of right now on Amazon Canada, we're looking at $105.44. Because I live in British Columbia, that would be $117.60 Canadian after tax. If that price works with you, I'd say get it because it does work. That's all I have to report, so thanks a lot for checking out my video. I hope you have a great day. As always, leave any questions below in the comments and we'll talk about it there.